very lucky discovery in my research for my book on Civil War memory. I found it in a collection at the Houghton Library at Harvard, the papers of an old Union Veterans Organization, and there were boxes of this stuff. But I don't know, maybe in the second box I looked in, there was a file labeled First Decoration Day. And I opened it, and here was a handwritten narrative on a piece of cardboard. At the bottom of it, it had a name, Berwick, but it listed a date and the New York Herald Tribune. I went over and got out the New York Herald Tribune for that date in late spring of 1865 in Charleston, South Carolina. And whoever wrote that down put the wrong date. I kept looking and kept looking and kept looking and kept looking and finally, there it was. Verbatim, that story. It was describing a parade held in Charleston, South Carolina on May 1st, 1865. The Civil War had ended, just ended. Charleston had been evacuated by the Confederates back in February. The people left in Charleston, by and large, were all African Americans and Union troops, some white, some black. And the story on this narrative was people gathered on the old planter's horse track, the race track in Charleston. It was called the Washington Race Course, and they held this extraordinary parade. In the last six to eight months of the war, the Confederates had converted the infield of that race track into an open-air prison, and about 260 Union soldiers had died of exposure and disease, and they'd all been thrown in a mass grave out behind the grandstand of the race course. We now have photos of that grandstand. The story was just almost unbelievable when I first read it. About 10,000 people marched around the old planter's race course. And the oval is still there in a park. But it said it was led by uh, some two or 3,000 black children carrying armloads of roses and flowers and singing John Brown's body. Followed by black women, black men, and then Union troops. And they marched around the course, and then they gathered in this cemetery that had been created by local black workmen, as many as could fit into the cemetery. And they heard the preaching from five black ministers, according to this article, and a small black children's choir sang the national anthem, America the Beautiful, and three or four spirituals. After this ceremony, broke up and went back into the infield of the old racetrack and did what most of us do on Memorial Day. They had, they had picnics, they had a speaker stand with speeches. The children ran around. But back around the graveyard, they had built a fence all the way around it and they whitewashed the fence and they had an archway, entryway, and over the archway, they painted the inscription, Martyrs of the Race Course. These were the freed people of Charleston paying tribute to the Union dead. And it was their way of declaring the meaning of the war. That's the first Memorial Day. All the other places that claim to be the sites in their numerous towns and cities, south and north, that claim to be the place where Memorial Day had its origins in this kind of ritual, claimed 1866. Now, it perhaps doesn't matter which year it was created, but it was one of those unbelievably good pieces of luck in an archive that then led me to more and more sources, and eventually to even public commemorations of this in Charleston. And, and now we have a, a marker, a state historical marker there, commemorating the first Memorial Day. I've had a lot of lucky discoveries in archives, but that's by far my favorite. <laughs>